What's up YouTube, Eric here. We just had a big night for earnings and I wanna cover Amazon specifically. I know a lot of you have questions about Amazon. It's one of my top holdings. I've been long for a long time. I know this company very well. I wanna share what I know so far with you guys. So when the, the earnings report first came out, there was a lot of confusion around that loss with Rivian. I'll go through that here in a second. The quarter was not great. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great. And the, the guidance also is a little bit light as well. So if you look at the growth, it's the slowest growth rate since the dot-com bust in 2001. So of course, that's a negative headline. You, you have kind of a pandemic pull through. You've got those pandemic comps, the COVID comps. And, you know, the economy is slowing down a little bit. They've got supply chain issues, things like that. Now, if you're invested in Amazon, you're probably invested for the reasons I am, like Amazon Web Services for the new advertising segments. But of course, retail is a big part of it. So we had we had actually shares go down about 10%. Stay tuned for the whole thing. I'll show you a chart. I'll tell you where I think the stock price might go. Right now, it's trading about 9.5% down. So it's hovering around $2,600 and change. The company recorded a $7.6 billion loss for its investment in electric vehicle maker Rivian. Now, looking at the numbers, so earnings per share originally came, came out. It was a lot worse than this. They've adjusted it now. It's $7.38 positive. It, used, it was negative, actually, when it first came out. So it was a miss, $8.36 expected. But that's not the whole story because it's worse than this if you get rid of this adjusted part because of that Rivian loss I covered. Revenue is $116.4 billion versus $116.3 billion expected. So it was a slight beat on revenue. Of course, the earnings per share was a miss. Amazon Web Services, a slight beat, $18.44 billion versus $18.27 billion. Advertising was a little bit light, $7.88 billion versus $8.17 billion expected. But that actually is a pretty good growth rate. It talks about down here, um, growth rate is actually higher. So advertising here, it talks about estimated uh, 8.17 billion. The segment grew 23% year over year faster than its peers. So that is a positive. Um, Apple did report, had a good earnings tonight, beat pretty much on everything. Um, but we've got some issues with Amazon. So the, the, you know, the guidance is a little bit light. Second quarter revenue, they're expecting 116 to 121 billion. The analysts were projecting 125.5 billion. And let's just look at this and see kind of where it's at from a price to sales ratio, a PE ratio. Let's just look at the valuation a little bit. We know what's going on under the hood. And actually, before we do that, this may take some time. So this is Jassy, the CEO. So Jassy, the CEO says here is a quote, this may take some time as we work through ongoing inflationary and supply chain pressures, but we see encouraging progress on a number of customer experience dimensions, including delivery speed performance, and now approaching levels not seen since the months immediately preceding the pandemic in early 2020. So things are starting to improve in the supply chain front. That's a good thing. Um, Amazon has been navigating a host of economic challenges. It talks about all the things they've been going through, you know, higher fuel costs, labor costs, global supply chain issues. And they did actually increase. They hiked Amazon Prime from $100. Uh, $19 to $139. So they're trying to, to combat that. Of course, that recurring revenue is nice. The Amazon Web Services is nice. Okay, so the price to sales ratio. Every time it gets to around three, it's been a buy. At least in recent years, we've been in a bull run though. So you have to kind of take that with a grain of salt. But if I look back, you can see it got up to 4.6. You know, there's a couple fours. It did actually get below three here uh, back in 2017 briefly. And if you go back like to say 2009, it looks like here, of course, we were in the twos and the ones. 2010, we were kind of coming out of a, a recessionary period. So I suppose it's possible it could always get down to those levels. It's just something to be aware of. I think that it's probably going to trade closer to that three price of sales because of the things like Amazon Web Services and advertising that they didn't have 10 years ago. And that's going to change the game. If I look at a PE ratio on it, you know, at 27.63, and it's it's trading lower than that now. I'll show you a chart here in a second. It's a 42 P ratio. So you're getting closer to that 40 P ratio, maybe even the high 39s if you do the math on it. Now, this is a chart of Amazon. Just want to go through this really fast. Okay, so as I've been talking, the stock's actually broke down. It was holding $2,600. It's come down now to this S3 line, guys. So this is at 25.33 right now post-market. So it's down closer to 12%. It was up about 5% today, now down about 12% after hours, trading close to $2,500. $2, now, if you look at this, the old S3 on it was closer to what 2375 
And if you look at this here, kind of what happened, guys, this was a, a $1,626 stock at the bottom, March 2020, the pandemic. The thing popped and it went all the way to $3,773, kind of had a double top here and broke down. This channel where those two maroon lines are, it's kind of been trading that range. Now it's broke under that range. I do think this will end up being a great opportunity longer term. There also is going to be a stock split coming up here in June. There's going to be a 20 for one stock split. So it's probably a good time to get into the stock. Now, I've said this before, but if you, you cut one pizza into 20 slices, it's still one pizza. But the market often does react to stock splits and it does often run the prices higher. There's more pin action as well when you think of options trading because for options trading, you need 100 shares for one contract. It's pretty hard to do when it's $2,500 a share. I think this thing could find buyers around 2,500 a share. I think it could easily break down, you know, maybe 2,350, you know, 2,250, probably worst case scenario. You know, anything could happen, it could always go lower. If I'm buying this, I'm probably buying it right here and I'm nibbling and I'm, I'm dollar cost averaging. You know, when you think about what happens after hours, tomorrow it could open up and go lower. We've had a lot of these gap down in the morning or it, it could certainly pop and go higher. The fact that they actually miss, you know, earnings, they had that big write off with Rivian, plus they have light guidance for the next quarter. Those are all negative things. So you have to you have to kind of just use your judgment here, be smart. But when I think longer term, I'm thinking about a five and 10 year hold. And I think about Amazon, Amazon Web Services, that's recurring revenue. OK, that that is growing more and more. And there's there's still er, early innings. We're in early innings right now for cloud services. When you think of Amazon Web Services, they still are the king. They've got other competition, but they are the king. When you think of their advertising segment, that was a little bit light, but growing faster than its peers. I think there's a lot of total addressable markets still on the advertising side. Again, that business did not exist when we're looking at 10 year, when we're looking at some of the, uh, the price to earnings and price to sales earlier 10 years ago. So, you know, also the, the prime subscription is now a higher, they raised that last quarter, you know, that's going to be recurring revenue as well. So, there's a lot of great things going for this company. Of course, anytime you miss and you have a huge market cap like this with high expectations, you're going to get dinged. It's still not a dirt cheap stock, but from a valuation perspective, you know, it's trading at historically a range where buyers come in. If the whole market breaks down, you know, these, these charts, technicals, they don't really matter that much. Fundamentals are going to be 90%, technicals are 10%. We're looking at this chart to get an idea of where it might go if we're trying to buy it for long-term investing. I'm not a financial advisor, so make your own decisions here. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. This is the kind of stuff we do all the time. Hit that bell notifications. If you wanna help me for doing videos like this, guys, drop me a comment and like. I know a lot of you are already in the Patreon and Discord and you don't comment as much on the YouTube videos. I think it's hurting the algorithm. So help me out, start a conversation with a buddy and, and talk in, this, in, in YouTube on this, on this thread and drop me a comment. And better yet, drop me comments of what you guys want me to do for you. What videos should I make? What stocks should I cover next? You know, as a creator, it's tough. Sometimes we run, we run out of ideas and it's hard to stay fresh. So drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. And if I'm doing a good job, let me know. If there's something I can improve on, you know, let me know. But encouragement, engagement really is the fuel that drives us when you think of creators, guys. We need you to be successful and to keep pushing forward. So I appreciate your time and attention. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.